It's miserable. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> on a cigarette in the corner. This is terrible. Right. Oh, just yes. <laughs> pink ashtray. Pink. Oh. Guys, I came from Dublin in Ireland yesterday. Flew in, got to see the movie, and I was in the back of a taxi crying at the end of it. Yes. <laughs> the taxi driver was like, "What's wrong with you?" And I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> People are going to be shocked about this movie, aren't they? Let's hope. Yeah. I almost I don't want them to go in with any expectations. This is it's so mm. hard because it's everywhere and Barbie is so familiar to everyone, but still no one knows what this movie will be until you just go in and experience it. Yeah, isn't that the best? Like, you know, we we live in an age where you go on your phone and you watch a trailer and you like I know what this is. Most of the time, yeah, you, you see the entire movie in two minutes. People have no idea. There have been so many trailers for the Barbie movie and like people still have no idea what the film is about. Yeah. But like you said, like it, it's gonna you know, it's like you know, there's the spectacle and the dance that everyone's watching online and you know but then there's there's layers to it. Like you could leave crying, you could leave laughing like the, and every kind of single possible emotion in between it. What was that like on set? Like I would presume there was plenty of messing or messers on the set. Can you name any reveal who was the one that was always, you know, making everyone laugh? I mean, it was just really a treat to watch the performances because yeah. everybody could just come on set and be their kind of goofiest, mm -hmm. most childlike self and that was encouraged, you know, like Greta told uh, Ryan to tap into like her three year old's tantrums. I don't know if her son is three yet. Well, but her child's tantrums. And he, watching him, I remember that f the first scene we shot on set was like the boyfriend girlfriend scene between Margot and Ryan. And, and we were just kind of sitting in the back and to watch even Ryan find his voice for Ken, find his laugh for Ken was just so entertaining. And the big beach off scene, like yeah. that was one of my favorite days on set of just watching these two guys be macho but not really know what that is. <laughs> and <then laughs> challenge each other to something that they didn't really understand. And it just got more absurd and, uh, with each take to the point where I, I know I, I messed up a couple scenes in the background. You kind of feel like you are in Barbie's whole world, don't you? Mm. I know as a viewer watching it, how did we just going home at night going, we have just done this wild thing today. <laughs> How do I explain it at home? How did that work? Um, I mean, it's just, it's impossible not to be immersed in that world when you step onto that set. Um, you know, Sarah, Sarah Greenwood was our designer and she just did such an amazing job of, um, and I, I say this like with full disclosure, I didn't, I didn't have a Barbie dream house. I don't know if that's surprising to anybody. Well, when I was a kid, but like I, I mean, these like real life, life sized dream houses I thought were just absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, the spiral staircases going into the pool, the 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 donuts, the flamingos on the lawn, the you know, down to the yeah. I mean, you were saying like down to the little intricate details of the furniture and the you know little trinkets um, on each of the sets. I mean, it was just you know, it it, it just. When there's when there's that much pink, like I really do, I feel like pink has like a. This is gonna sound super dumb, but like, you know how aromatherapy is like, you know, you got the, like the, the smell of lavender calms you, like that's just we know that, and I feel like that the color pink calms you uh, and this, like makes you kind of goofy, 100%. makes you want to be fun and makes you want to dance. It and makes so, you happy in this it makes world. You happy, like yeah. as someone who does not like pink, I, you can't <laughs> help but to respect pink when you're walking onto this set. And I have to say, we shot this in London, and London mm. was mad foggy. Mm. It was cloudy, it was very rainy. Mm -hmm. But walking onto that Barbie beach set was heaven. Mm -hmm. Like, we had to shoot the high Barbie, high Ken scene for like four days, which was <laughs> Hang on a second, four days? So yes, it took <laughs> four days to shoot us all saying in the different POVs, high Barbie, high Ken. There's a lot of eye lines. That. There's a lot of There's Barbies a lot and of... Kens and <laughs> But at least the being on the beach set and the, the fake artificial Barbie sun was just it was perfect. On that, are you guys given a Barbie handbook? Like is there a rule book book from Mattel that goes, This is what you can do, this is what you can't do, or was Greta just going, let's go free flowing? Mattel wishes. I'm sure they <laughs> wish they could have gotten a handbook off, but I think that was, it, I, to their credit, they gave Greta the free reign to 
tell the story that she wanted to tell. And, you know, Mattel gets poked fun of in the movie several mm -hmm. times. But, like, who wouldn't want Will Ferrell to, to represent your company, the comedic genius that, that he is? They had mm -hmm. to, like, give up uh, a lot to, to get this level of, I think, filmmaking from Greta. And I think it was wise for them to kind of just sit back and, mm -hmm. and let her do her thing. Greta is a bit of a legend, isn't she? Like, just the storytelling. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm from Ireland, and like, storytelling is a thing that we love doing. But just watching this play out last night and not know where it was going, what is she like in real life to be around her like that? Is it like that? I mean, I mean, yes. I, I think you def you feel the kind of genius of her idea. But I also, I think one of the things that really struck me just meeting her and and you know. In taking her energy in is like just how wonderfully goofy and fun and collaborative like it can be you know I, I feel like Hollywood is littered with stories of like genius auteurs mm -hmm. who are you know are absolutely unrelenting in their vision and uncompromising and they make every day on you know because it's all about their genius and their vision like Greta, you know, in, in the best possible way, it was not like that at all. It was just every day was fun. Mm -hmm. it made all of us love coming to work every day. And, and yeah, and she really instilled the sense of, like, play. Of, like, yeah. we're children in a sandbox. And whatever we were making in that day is going to be special and unique in and of itself. And we all have our own role that we can play. And we all have a say in what we do. Is it true to say that you... I, I don't know why, but you can see it in movies whether actors enjoy themselves or not you actually look like it, you looked like you enjoyed yourselves miserable it was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was I'm gonna stick around the corner this is like, terrible oh, just yes. <laughs> pink, pink ashtray pink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no it was like everything Celine said you walk onto set and you just she's having such a good time you just feel safe to also be dumb you know mm -hmm. and that's not there's not many environments like that where you're just you can you can try and you can improv and you can um, just put your full self on display and it'll be received. You would never know that she was directing, you know, a massive budget movie and, and the, the 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 possible crippling weight of that, because mm -hmm. uh, she was just in pleasant spirits all the time. There was no there was you just didn't feel any pressure from her. She just wanted to make the best film possible and have the best time. Mm -hmm. You would never know that she was like making this scathing critique of patriarchy I either. Bet you're not right? It was just like she was just like, okay, now say this fun thing or like be be do this dumb thing, and then, but then to all of a sudden to see it assembled in its final, you know, in its final form, and to feel the messages and the themes come through about what Barbie is, the critique of Barbie, and how that's evolved over the years, and like you know the critique of patriarchy and how that that evolves over the course of the film as well. It's just like incredible. Please tell me you took something. Just any sort of merch. Oh, there. Like, this is mine. I wish, but Simu did better than I did. I'm more of a kleptomaniac. I definitely <laughs> <laughs> I definitely had some stealing days in high school, and so I just like <laughs> got really good at... I did, did I just say that? We have camera? the guards outside. I did. I did. <laughs> I stole... Once I stole a kumquat from a supermarket, because a kum, kumquats, at least in Canada, at the... Kumquats are, are the, little, the little ones, right? Insanely expensive. I think oh. I stole... I didn't even like it. I think it was just that the, the fact that it? I looked at it and I was like, that is way <laughs> more expensive than anything else I've ever... Like, I have to. I have I'll to have it. You. And it's so easy to steal. Anyway, wow. all of that to say, I may have, I may have appropriated a thing or two um, from, the, from the set. Guys, it was great talking to you today. Thanks so great much. Talking Cheers. To you too.